Hello, my name is Jonathan Schellen, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Crane Shares. And I'm joined by my colleague, James Mond, who's our Head of Capital Markets. And we wanted to welcome you uh, to our uh, webinar today to talk about our newest uh, ETF at Crane Shares called CLIP, the China Internet uh, and Covered Call ETF Strategy, uh, where we're essentially buying KWeb, our flagship, and then writing covered calls. So welcome and, and thank you for joining us. Uh, there are three words that you're gonna hear a lot of today, volatility, growth, and income. Now volatility is oftentimes associated with risk and risk sometimes is seen as opportunity. So connecting volatility to growth is pretty straightforward. However, when you think about volatility and income, it becomes less intuitive. By the end of this webinar, you're gonna have a clear understanding how we've been able to harness volatility to create income with CLIP. And uh, the other thing is you'll also understand how CLIP can be used in conjunction with KWeb to really fine tune the growth and income profile of most portfolios. Now, before we jump forward, we have a couple of housekeeping items that we need to address. Um, one, we want this to be an interactive discussion and we have a, a meaningful Q&A scheduled for the end. So if you have any questions and you're joining us through Zoom, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you're streaming on our website, watching through our website, please email your questions to info at craneshares.com. Additionally, we're offering one SEMA and CFP credit for this webinar. So if you wanna uh, receive your credit, please email ce at craneshares.com and we'll get that done for you. But let's jump ahead. So let me tell you a little bit about Crane Shares for those of you that, 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 um, that don't know our firm so well. Uh, Crane Shares was founded 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, as the only US asset manager focused on China. We now manage 38 ETFs globally, roughly $11 billion in assets with 50 employees. The unique insights that we provide uh, for the China and climate markets has led us to have over half a million shareholders invested in our funds that trust us with their hard-earned savings. Now, our CIO, our Chief Investment Officer, Brendan Ahern, is best in class. And if you're not signed up to Brendan's daily China Last Night blog, I would encourage you to do that now by going to chinalastnight.com, chinalastnight.com. Uh, please do it now. Let's jump ahead. So when you think about the, the suite of ETFs that Crane Shares offers, we have three unique segments. The first is our China-focused segment of ETFs. This includes things like China internet and e-commerce, themes like China healthcare, China environment, 5G, and so on. And our expertise in creating China themes has allowed us to expand our palette into the international space, covering things like Asia high income, uh, S&P dividend aristocrats, and even electric vehicles. Our next pillar of the business uh, is related to climate. You know, we have half a dozen ETFs in the climate space, and this really started when we pioneered carbon credit investing in an ETF format. And we did that about three years ago. So over this three-year period, uh, we've been able to even expand our climate palette to include uh, things like commodities and electrification metals uh, and even equities. So we believe that in order to solve the world's uh, climate challenges, it's important for China to have a seat in the table. So it's a really natural extension of our broader business. And then finally, we have a KFA fund suite where we partner with leading asset managers like Quadratic Capital and Mount Lucas uh, to produce what we view as uncorrelated or less correlated strategies. Strategies that are sometimes uh, placed in the alternatives uh, bucket 
and designed to provide a very complementary stream of returns, a unique stream of returns in your traditional stock bond portfolio. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, I want to talk a little bit about our first uh, strategy that we launched nearly 10 years ago, KWeb, which is the underlying holding, one of the underlying holdings in CLIP. Now, why would we launch a China internet and e-commerce ETF in 2013? Well, we were observing that since joining the World Trade Organization in 2001, China has really transformed itself into the world's second largest economy and the world's second largest stock market. China's tech sector has benefited from this massive wealth creation that's taken place from urbanization and from tech savvy consumers. Everybody knows that China has 1.4 billion people, about a billion of them online. But what people may not realize is that China has more millennials than the US population. In other words, there's this very strong catalytic driving force in China that's really benefiting uh, a lot of these e-commerce platforms, the Tencents and the Alibabas, and just facilitating online consumption in general. So in my opinion, China internet and e-commerce is the very definition of China growth. And we find that many of our clients view it that way as well. And if we look back at history on the next slide, you'll see that you know, broad emerging market investing has produced middling returns, you know, something that's kind of zero to 2%. However, the China internet segment over this period has produced annualized returns near 9%. The only caveat is that the China internet sector is more volatile. You could see that uh, the CSI Overseas China Internet Index has had volatility that's roughly twice the level of broad-based emerging markets. Now, KWeb, as an ETF, has done a good job at taming some of that volatility versus buying the individual stocks on their own. In other words, KWeb is less volatile than if you went out and bought Alibaba or Tencent and NetEase and so on. Um, but it's still a relatively high level of volatility. Um, let's go to the next slide. The reason that KWeb makes sense in a portfolio despite its heightened volatility is that it has meaningful correlation benefits. You'll see that when you look at KWeb compared to the S&P and the Russell 2000, NASDAQ, you know, traditional US equity indexes, or even indexes that are designed to produce some level of income high yield, for example, in the bond space or dividend paying stocks in the equity space, you'll see that the correlations are really quite low uh, versus what you would get between these indexes on their own. So a lot, of, a lot of portfolio builders have been able to reduce or at least mitigate some of the volatility by combining KWeb in a broader portfolio context. So that's the long-term picture. The long-term picture we believe is strong, Owning an investment like KWeb um, individually makes sense in a portfolio, uh, but what about the short term? So let's turn to what's happened more recently on the next slide. One of the things that you're going to find is that uh, you know 2022 was a pretty difficult year for KWeb. Um, the prices bottomed at about $17 in October, uh, quite a ways away from the. $31, $32 that it's trading at today. And a lot of this performance challenge was driven by the macro environment, the micro environment, and also politics. Now we watch all these things very closely. And what I have here on this slide is our macro watch list, which is flashing green now, um, you know, in some cases bright green. And in parts of last year, there was a lot of red when we looked at this. Now, what's fueled this improvement from red to green in terms of our top-down macro watch list? Well, a lot of it is the elimination of the zero COVID policy and the reopening of China. These are things that have occurred recently and it's already demonstrated significant results. 
Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but there's this term called revenge spending. Now, when I first heard about revenge spending, I thought it meant what uh, a divorcee would do to their spouse by draining their bank account. But it turns out that revenge spending has nothing to do with that. It has to do with pent up demand for consumption based on some exogenous factor like a pandemic. And so think about this. Over Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, the seven day stretch that took place uh, just last month, Chinese consumers, 300 million of them that were traveling, spent $56 billion just in those seven days. Now that sounds like a big number, but keep in mind, Chinese consumers have accumulated $2.6 trillion in savings over the pandemic. So the household net savings is 2.6 trillion and this 56 billion that they spent in a week, that was just 2% of it, a mere drop in the bucket. But it just shows you the power of, uh, you know, growth potential of COVID, uh, the zero COVID ending and the reopening that's happening. And so it shouldn't surprise anybody that last year's China PMI numbers, or what last, year, why, don't, why would I say last year? Yesterday's China PMI numbers, rather, uh, smashed expectations. And, um, and of course, with that, we saw a 6% rise uh, in KWEB's price. So many of the macro factors that were a headwind have now turned into a tailwind. Let's look at micro on the next slide. There are three, three things that we're observing with kind of the micro landscape with China. So this is, this is really the bottom up picture uh, looking at individual stocks. And one of the things we find is that when you look at the top 10 KWEB securities, the top holdings, um, they reached about 100 million in revenue, 100 billion, I apologize, 100 billion in revenue and 20 billion in net income back in 2020. And at that time, KWEP was trading at about $100. And since, the, since that time, there was some decline in earnings and, and revenues kind of bottomed out. But what we're seeing now is that revenues are reaccelerating, especially with some of the positive results we saw with Q4 earnings, and net income is starting to rise again. So we think that there's this large gap between the earnings potential of these companies and their stock price. Some of that has been bridged in the last few months as KWEB has rallied off its October lows, but there's still a long runway to go. This also shows up not just in kind of a company by company comparison vis-a-vis -vis history, but also when we compare the valuations of KWEB and the China internet sector to the US internet sector. Uh, KWEB PEs are trading around 20, uh, US internet is trading around 30. So there's also a big relative value disparity between Chinese stocks and US stocks. So, we believe that between a, a macro view and a, and a micro view, um, this is an attractive period of time to be investing in the China internet sector. Um, on politics, well, politics is a disease that's hard to diagnose. So, you know, that's something where you have to read the tea leaves. But despite all the saber rattling, um, I interpret what's happening politically with China as more bark than bite. Uh, truth be told, the economic value of the U.S.-China relationship in terms of trade and revenue that U.S. companies earn in China, which is upwards of $300 billion, has actually never been larger. Now, as you can tell from the short-term view on KWEB and some of the volatility, you have to have the stomach for investing in KWEB. Um, it, it can be subject to price flings as yesterday's 6% move up has indicated. Um, and that's part of the reason why we've created CLIP and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. So we began studying uh, the option-based ETF space and we observed something really interesting. 
the option-based ETF space, which is now north of 200 individual ETFs, has grown from virtually nothing in 2019 to 45 billion in assets in 2022. In other words, this whole segment of the ETF market has gone exponential. Now, why would that happen? Why would options-based strategies become so interesting and important in portfolios? Well, one of the reasons is that options create more predictable outcomes. So as you have volatility picking up, as we entered COVID and markets were beyond their Goldilocks stage, people were looking for more predictable outcomes in their portfolios, but still wanted the transparency that accompanies ETFs. So by combining liquid options into an ETF, investors can benefit from a more sophisticated strategy, more predictability, but still easy to own. And that's why really part of the, the genesis for us creating CLIP, the China internet uh, and covered call strategy at Crane Shares, because we wanted to deliver something that gave more certainty and outcomes and gave our investors an additional tool to help them manage portfolios. So what I'd like to do now is hand things over to James Mon to talk specifically about what covered call strategies are and how we're able to employ them in conjunction with KWeb. James, over to you. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you to everyone who's uh, joining us here today to learn more about CLIP. Um, so what is a covered call strategy? Uh, a covered call strategy uh, is a basically you hold the underlying asset and, and you write an option um, associated with that asset. So an option is a financial contract that gives buyers the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying asset at an agreed upon price, that's the strike price, at an agreed upon time, the expiration. And a covered call refers to a scenario where uh, an investor is holding an underlying asset and sells a call option on that asset that they already own. Uh, this allows that investor to receive uh, the option premium uh, while at the same time, um, again, being protected if that share is called away, if that option uh, expires in the money, uh, the investor doesn't have to go out into the market and purchase that underlying asset at a higher price at the current market price it's already uh, owning that asset and can already uh, deliver the shares that it already holds. So let's move on to the next slide. And here we see a comparison between KWeb and, and Clip. So we begin with KWeb, uh, which we're all familiar with um, and tracks the performance of the underlying benchmark index. Um, and with KWeb, you get the potential for growth, that uncertain upside, but you also get the potential uh, for uh, the downside uh, performance of the index as well. Uh, and obviously we're all invested in KWeb with the expectation that um, in the long term there will be um, you know, a lot of growth potential in those underlying holdings of the fund. Uh, with CLIP, we hold shares of KWeb, um, which again provides uh, the exposure of KWeb uh, on a dollar for dollar basis, every dollar in CLIP is exposed to a dollar uh, worth of KWeb shares. But in addition to that, we write uh, a covered call on that KWeb position. Uh, and what that does for us in the fund is it provides uh, premium income. So the fund earns income uh, as it's writing those call contracts and we're giving up that potential for upside. So we, what you end up with CLIP is that premium income plus uh, the downside potential of KWeb's performance, which remains. So let's explore a little bit more about where that premium income comes from and what drives it on the next slide. So CLIP is made possible because KWeb has such deep and liquid options markets. As you can see here, uh, we have the top 30 um, options uh, markets on ETFs based on notional value of open interest. And you can see that KWeb sits in the top 25 with about 6 billion of notional value of open interest in options. And this tremendous pool of liquidity in, in options on KWeb is what allows us to run the CLIP strategy 
so efficiently and really monetize the volatility in KWeb and, and turn it to our advantage in terms of um, income for Clip. So let's explore that a little further on the next slide. So KWeb has a history of heightened volatility, which leads directly to higher option premiums. As you can see here over time, since the beginning of 2018, we've seen a continued increase in uh, volatility as is described here by the one-year rolling volatility chart. Um, and when we have higher volatility, that leads directly to higher option premiums. Let's go to the next slide, please. So implied volatility for KWeb closely tracks realized volatility for KWeb over time. And what that means is that the options contracts are calculating an expected volatility level for KWeb shares based on historical performance, as well as expectations for uh, the volatility in the price of KWeb going forward. And what we tend to see is that the options market does a very good job of accurately predicting that volatility, uh, the implied volatility in the options that are trading now versus where the realized volatility ends up for KWeb in the future. So you can see the uh, kind of maroon colored dots represent the realized volatility for KWeb and the light blue colored dots represent the implied volatility for KWeb. And you can only see in, in kind of extreme circumstances there um, where the realized volatility for KWeb uh, may deviate a bit or come in, the actual level may come in a bit higher than what the options market was predicting. Uh, but you can see over time for many, many time scenarios, uh, the implied volatility of the options closely aligns with the realized volatility in KWeb. So here we see a comparison of historical volatility in KWeb versus the major US equity indices. And you can see KWeb is represented by the maroon line, uh, significant uh, growth in the one year rolling volatility, similar to what we saw in the chart a few slides back. Um, but also, as you can see, uh, for, for many time horizons, many time periods, the volatility for KWeb um, was higher than both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 is represented by the yellow and green lines. And for, uh, for most time periods, with the exception of uh, 2020 during COVID, uh, implied volatility of um, KWeb was significantly higher than the Russell 2000 index. So higher implied volatility leads to higher options premiums. Um, the current implied volatility for KWeb is approaching 50%, uh, whereas for the NASDAQ 100 and the Russell 2, it's in the mid 20% range. And for the S&P 500, it's just approaching 20%. As you can see in the chart on the right, options premiums um, do rise with implied volatility. And uh, you can see there the S&P 500, Russell 2000, and NASDAQ tend to see options premiums in the kind of two and a half to three and a half percent range where the KWeb options premium uh, is approaching the 6% range. Uh, so you see a, a substantial difference there as implied volatility increases, as you see on the x-axis, uh, the option premium as a percentage of price uh, is significantly higher for KWeb as you see on the y-axis. Historical options premiums uh, have uh, varied quite a bit. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a, you know, as volatility, um, you know, increases, it's not necessarily something that uh, is static. Volatility moves quite a bit. Uh, but what we do see with options pricing is that even though vol may change quite a bit on a day-to-day -day basis, the options market tends to have a smoothing effect in terms of pricing uh, that volatility as part of options prices. So we may see a spike in volatility that rises substantially and comes in in a matter of days or weeks, but we see a lasting effect on implied volatility as that gets priced into uh, the options that are trading uh, on KWeb. Uh, so what this allows for is um, a smoothing over time of the income we receive when we write options on KWeb um, and capturing uh, the effect of heightened volatility in cases where uh, volatility on KWeb spikes, 
uh, the implied volatility that's priced into the options will remain at an elevated level for a period of time. And that tends to benefit our strategy as we're writing options and capturing this premium. And with that, um, I'll hand, hand it back to Jonathan to go over the structural features of CLIP. Great. Thanks, James. You know, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that when we're managing the strategy for CLIP, what we're doing is writing options every single month. So we're writing options that are, you know, kind of 30 plus days in duration. Uh, so think about that. When James was talking about income, comparisons between the S&P or even CLIP, um, you know, we're talking about monthly income for covered call writing for S&P of around 2% and monthly income uh, for covered call writing for CLIP that's over 5%. And that's actually been our experience um, as we've been managing the strategy. But we looked, you know, we had the benefit um, in developing CLIP at looking at dozens of other ETFs that are using covered call strategies in the marketplace and learning from, from them and trying to identify features that would be most important to us. One of the features that we thought was very important um, was around using flex options. So when you go into your own brokerage account and you buy or sell listed options, um, they're, uh, they're not flex options. They're just regular listed options. And they're what, what are called American style options. In other words, when you uh, sell an option on your own uh, on, the, on the exchange, you, the person that bought that option could exercise that option um, at any time between the time they bought it to the time that it expires at any time. Now, in running the strategy in order to make it much more operationally efficient, we're using flex options because that allows us to convert that American style option to a European style option. And what that means is that the only time that the options that we use can be exercised are at the maturity date. So the flex option is unique in that it is still a listed option but it's available to institutional investors like us to customize some features of what a traditional listed option would look like. And so this is a benefit to an individual who would otherwise be doing something like this on their own in getting more efficiency. Now, the other thing that we found is that some ETFs don't actually write uh, options on the thing that they own. In our case, we've made a, a very conscious decision to invest in KWeb, but also sell options on KWeb so that there is very clear alignment between the underlying asset and the option that we write. It mitigates basis risk um, and other return deviations. Uh, and could it potentially produce some tax benefits that I'll talk about in a second. The other thing that is great about being able to use KWeb, the ETF in this ETF, is that it provides for in-kind settlement. So when people invest in CLIP, uh, we're able to receive those assets in KWeb shares, which is very efficient um, for, for many purposes, operational, and again, to some extent, taxation. Another feature that we felt strongly about is not to cap our monthly income. We found that, you know, as we scan the marketplace, that sometimes caps are applied to covered call strategies, limiting their monthly distribution to something below the option premium that was written, meaningfully below the option premium that was collected. Um, we're not doing that with CLIP. And then finally, because of the structures that we've put in place, um, and this comment is really beyond the scope of this webinar, but we could qualify for qualified covered call option tax treatment. So this is a special IRS rule 
that makes certain ways of uh, managing covered call strategies more tax efficient. And uh, we've intended to manage our strategy in a way that's QCCO eligible, uh, which is also, we think, a positive. So, you know, by, by launching our ETF in 2023 instead of 2020, um, we were able to learn a lot from experience, from client experience, from, you know, potential profiles of returns. Uh, and, um, and this was important to us. So we wanted to share that with you today. Let's go to the next slide. So how has CLIP done? Has it behaved the way we would have expected? Well, what would we expect with uh, a covered call strategy on KWeb? There's two ways to think about it. If you buy a covered call strategy in a market that's range bound or declining, uh, a covered call strategy should outperform the underlying assets. And, and that's really what's happened here. Since we launched CLIP in, in mid-January, uh, KWeb has declined somewhat. Now that decline is not entirely unexpected in the short term because as we talked about, KWeb had rallied from $17 a share to over $30 a share in a, in a short period of time. So this is a little bit of a breather for KWeb but that's the, the backdrop in which CLIP was launched. But what you'll find is that uh, CLIP has a, a volatility band every day that's tighter than KWeb, right? Not surprisingly, because of the nature of the strategy, uh, the range of daily CLIP returns has been plus or minus you know, 2%, well, whereas the range of KWeb returns has been closer to plus or minus 4%. And that shows up in up days, down days. Uh, over this period of time that we've been managing CLIP, uh, CLIP has had 17 up days and 16 down days, and KWeb has had uh, 13 up days and 20 down days. So covered call writing strategies really do help to protect in those downside scenarios because the option premium acts as a cushion. And so not surprisingly, CLIP has outperformed KWeb by about 7% in this you know, range bound to slightly downward market. And that's in line with the distributions that we've made. So in January, we distributed uh, income of 2.2% for a partial month. And then in February, we distributed 5% income for the month. And we're writing options that are giving us option premium income that's in the fives. So if volatility remains where it is today, we expect that option premium income will remain you know, kind of in the fives. If uh, volatility increases, implied volatility increases, uh, option income could be higher. And of course, if implied volatility decreases, then option income could be lower. But our intention as managers of CLIP is to pay out these distributions every month and to have those distributions uh, closely mimic and track the option premium that we've earned over that period of time. So just to summarize, in markets that are kind of flat to down, CLIP is gonna outperform KWeb with less volatility. In markets that are rapidly or aggressively rallying for KWeb, CLIP is going to underperform KWeb, but CLIP is just going to, in those cases, uh, produce and pay out the monthly premium income. But it will not participate in, you know, uh, moves, uh, aggressive moves where KWeb could be up, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent. Um, in those environments, CLIP will necessarily perform uh, less but with commensurately less risk. Next slide, please. So just to you know, kind of wrap things up here a little bit in terms of thinking about the role of CLIP and KWeb in portfolios, we spent a lot of time talking about why KWeb is really 
you know, a, a, an important growth vehicle in portfolios because it captures the growth engine of China, internet and e-commerce, consumption, and a lot of the mega trends that exist in China with respect to continued urbanization, continued growth in internet users, and the importance of online uh, everything, essentially, in, in the Chinese economy. Uh, and of course, KWeb focuses really on price appreciation. Right? KWeb is not designed to be a meaningful source of income. Clip, on the other hand, is designed to do exactly that. It's designed to produce premium income each and every month at meaningful levels. As we've seen in our experience in managing the strategy, we've been producing monthly option premium income that's in the 5% range. And that's what we expect to distribute over time. Um, and the interesting thing, of course, that James highlighted so succinctly is that as volatility increases, the income potential for CLIP increases as well. Now, CLIP itself is going to look less volatile than KWeb because what we're essentially doing is exchanging this uncertain upside that KWeb has for this more stable premium income. So what does this mean as an investor? Well, it means that if you're really a growth-oriented investor and you have the stomach for volatility, you should invest in KWeb. And many of our investors do. That's their approach to investing, or they segment KWeb into a port part of their portfolio that is growth oriented. Uh, if you're an income oriented investor or you're running an income sleeve that includes things like high yield, Asia Pacific high yield, like our KHYB strategy, or even dividend paying equities, CLIP is a important con contributor to that type of portfolio, right? Think about this. If somebody puts just 10% of their income sleeve into CLIP, that can produce, at least based on what we've been distributing recently, an additional 50 basis points of income per month in that portfolio. And so what we're seeing is another um, use case is evolving as we talk to our clients, and that's blending KWeb and CLIP together in order to fine tune and target the level of income and growth that they seek. And we've put here on the slide a 50-50, which is, which is very straightforward, right? If you invest 50% in KWeb and 50% in CLIP, you're able to reduce the volatility that you would normally get with KWeb. You protect yourself in drawdown scenarios by having that option premium act as a cushion. And you're also getting monthly cash from this portfolio at, fairly meaningful levels. And so what we're finding is, and what I think our recommendation is for many investors is, if you're looking for something that balances growth and income, it makes a lot of sense to allocate to both KWeb and CLIP. It doesn't have to be 50-50, it could be 80-20 or 20-80, but there's, a, there's an approach here to allocate to these two ETFs to, target certain characteristics in your broader portfolio. So with that, um, I'd like to remind uh, our audience that uh, before we move into the Q&A session that um, there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen if you're uh, logging in with Zoom. And if you're streaming on the website, uh, please email your questions to info at craneshares.com. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open us up for uh, Q and A. So let's let's do that. Okay. So so one of the the questions that that we see here has to do with the composition um, of Clip. Uh, what is the split between the underlying index uh, and, and the covered calls. So um, let's go to the slide that shows the holdings of CLIP uh, as of February 28th. 
There you go. So if you look in the upper um, right-hand box, you could see that the holdings of CLIP are as follows. The KWEB ETF, which represents 98% of the portfolio, cash, which is the uh, was at a roughly three percent of the portfolio, and then you can see the the, the options that we wrote. Uh, we wrote options uh, that mature in March, right, uh, at a strike price of thirty two seventy one, and then we also wrote options uh, at a strike price of thirty two. Now the reason that you have two different uh, options that were written is because when money comes into the strategy, when we see new cash flows coming in, new buyers, we're writing options with those additional funds. Said differently, if $5 million comes into CLIP today, we're gonna take that $5 million, we're gonna invest that $5 million uh, into KWEB to make sure that we have that exposure. And then we're gonna write uh, a notional amount of calls also equal to $5 million. And that's what makes this a paired up covered call strategy. Another way of thinking about this is that we're not overexposing our options and we're not over or underexposing our KWEB ownership. We really need to make sure that these are paired up from a notional value standpoint. James, I see a question here. Um, that might be appropriate for you to, to get into. What are the typical spreads when buying CLIP? Sure. Yeah, so what we've seen uh, since the fund's inception for CLIP is spreads that have averaged uh, somewhere in the 50 to 60 basis point range, um, which for a newer fund as it's coming to market and uh, approaching its, um, you know, building AUM and approaching uh, maturity, getting more participation from different market makers and market participants, um, we tend to see those bid-ask spreads uh, tighten up uh, and, and narrow to uh, something approaching um, you know, the, 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 the minimum spread, uh, which, which is a penny, which is currently the spread on, on KWEB and, and has been for quite some time. So currently we're seeing that 50 to 60 BIP range on spreads. Uh, we've seen spreads, bid ask spreads as tight as uh, around 30 basis points. Um, and we do expect that as the fund continues to grow, um, and, and again, in terms of participation, in terms of uh, trading volumes, uh, that we'll see uh, more competition from market makers and tightening spreads. Great. Uh, and there's also another question. That, that goes into the liquidity uh, of KWEB ETF options. Can you spend a little bit of time and, and talk about liquidity? I know you mentioned where it is vis-a-vis -vis other ETFs, which is pretty amazing, right? Number 23 yeah. out of thousands of ETFs. Uh, but but how right. do you think about ETF option liquidity as it relates to KWEB? Sure. So the, the liquidity on KWEB options, there are a couple of different ways to think about uh, liquidity, whether it's on the ETF shares or on the options that are traded uh, on those ETF shares. So we see a very robust liquidity, um, obviously in the underlying KWEB as well as in the options on KWEB. Um, and the options uh, market makers are very active in uh, standard listed options uh, on, on KWEB, whether they be monthlies, uh, weeklies, or you know, other, um, you know, other tranches of options. Um, and we also see, um, you know, another way to think about options liquidity is not just what's been done, uh, which is what we see when we look at open interest and trading volume, uh, but also the potential that's there. Uh, when we talk to market makers, liquidity providers to understand uh, the potential for uh, liquidity and for trading on KWEB options, um, you know, we're consistently getting feedback that, um, the market stands ready to provide many multiples of what we see uh, actually trading. So it's really hard to say what the outer limits or what the upper limits are of KWEB options liquidity right now. Um, but um, you know, we can certainly say with confidence that um, you know the, the pool of liquidity is um, is substantially deep, and um, certainly you know would have the ability if if we saw a clip uh, assets grow. 
uh, quickly to um, you know the nine figure or even 10 figure level um, that there would be ample liquidity available in the underlying KWEB options um, to, to accommodate the fund's needs. Phenomenal. Uh, there's a question here that I'll address, which is really interesting. Uh, given that CLIP is a covered call strategy, does the fund have a high minimum buy size? So what's really great about ETFs and also, I mean, I, I, think, I think the reason that this is a very thoughtful question is because if you were to try to execute a covered call strategy on, on your own that invests in all the, that does kind of what we do, here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to go out and buy a share of Alibaba, Tencent, Badu, C-Trip, JD, Pinduoduo, and on and on and on. And that would be expensive because even if you could buy just one share, it would cost quite a bit of money. Um, and especially if you weighted those shares the way that we're weighting uh, KWEB. And then you have to then go and write calls on every one of those companies. And that too has certain constraints in terms of minimum size. So what makes this a really interesting question, and we haven't done the math, but we should, is if you try to do this on your own from your own account, it could cost quite a bit of money. However, because this is an ETF, and it's an ETF that's trading in the $20 range, to buy one share of CLIP, you basically need you know, between $20 and $25. So the minimum size is very small, and that's why we think CLIP is a way to democratize cover call writing because it's offered in an ETF wrapper. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, another question uh, that, I, that I think is really interesting is to kind of talk a little bit more about how CLIP and KWEB can work together. You know, we mentioned that there's this opportunity to blend KWEB and CLIP, uh, you know, call it 50-50, 95-5 or anything in between, but what does that actually mean? Like, what does it produce in terms of outcomes? Well, one of the things that we observe historically is that in about a third of the months that you own KWeb, KWeb has negative returns that are, you know, call it less than five percent. So we talk about KWeb being volatile. And in order to get, get the long-term gains that KWeb can produce, you have to accept you know, months where you have drawdowns and losses. Um, in about a third of those months, those losses are in the zero to 5% range. What that also means is that if CLIP is producing income that's also in the 5% you know, range, you're able to eliminate about a third of those drawdown months and turn losing months with KWeb into months that are you know, flat or near flat with this combination. Another way of saying that is that when you run a volatility analysis on any combination of KWeb and CLIP, you're gonna see a reduction in volatility. In fact, even though KWeb's volatility we talked about is twice the level of the, uh, S&P 500 or emerging markets and so on, CLIP's volatility is more in line with something like the NASDAQ. So we've really been able to create a strategy that at least from a historical standpoint um, had volatility that's, that's meaningfully lower than KWeb. And by combining these two together, you're gonna get you know, monthly cash distributions in combination with a lower volatility profile. Uh, so I see, sorry, yeah, Jonathan, ahead, please. please. I was, I was gonna say, I see a question here on uh, rebalancing. Uh, what would the rebalancing strategy between CLIP and KWeb look like? Um, so, so this one, again, a, a unique benefit that CLIP has of holding the actual underlying KWeb shares rather than trying to separately replicate uh, the performance of that index by holding the individual underliers, in addition to uh, operational and cost efficiencies associated with uh, writing the options themselves on KWeb itself, rather than uh, trying to write options on uh, the KWeb index, for example. 
Um, the clip, by, by virtue of the fact that it holds KWeb shares as its core holding, automatically gets the benefit of a KWeb rebalance. So there's no additional rebalancing required on Clip's part in order to maintain its exposure to the KWeb underlying index. Uh, KWeb uh, rebalances, uh, there's a standard rebalance schedule. It's twice annually in June and December. Uh, and there's also the possibility for ad hoc rebalances uh, based on other events that may arise that, that may have uh, necessitate changes to the underlying index. Uh, but CLIP itself uh, doesn't actually need to rebalance. When KWeb rebalances, CLIP gets that benefit and the CLIP's exposure to KWeb uh, remains uh, exactly in line. Uh, the only separate activity that, that takes place within CLIP outside of the KWeb holdings is the rolling of the options. So as Jonathan mentioned, CLIP writes options that um, are 30 days or more to expiry. And as those options approach expiration or reach expiration, uh, CLIP has the ability and, and will uh, either roll those options or if the options are expiring worthless, uh, write uh, a, a new tranche of options uh, to generate more income for our investors. There's a very interesting question, James, that I'm seeing about the top risk to CLIP. I'll, I'll share some of my views on what this could be and would love to, to get your input as well. So what do we think the top risk is to CLIP? Well, as we mentioned, and I'll start with an advantage and then we'll just reverse it. You know, one of the key advantages I think to CLIP is that if there's a drawdown in KWeb, implied volatility picks up and that then results in a higher future potential income stream. So I think that's a really unique feature. So, you know, you take October, which is a very difficult month for KWeb. October also produced some of the highest uh, income potential uh, from covered call writing strategies. So even though CLIP wasn't around in October, when we observe historically kind of the premium income relationship, it was pushing double digits, you know, nine, 10% in the month of October. Um, now, if you reverse that, what could, what could be a risk? Well, a risk would be that KWeb rallies very rapidly in a particular month, 20, 30, 40%. Clip doesn't get the upside of that rally, right? It's, it's restricted to its option income. And then if implied volatility rises dramatically, commensurate with that rise in price of KWeb, that can cause, um, you know, it could cause the value of the options that Clip owns to decline in value. So it, it could not perform as intended if KWeb rallies, you know, very aggressively and implied volatility also uh, increases aggressively. We look, when we look at history, that rarely happens. In other words, usually increases in implied volatility correlate highly with when KWeb draws down, not when it rallies. Usually, as, as we all know, just from observing markets, when you have prolonged bull markets, implied volatility comes down. So this is, you know, we see this with the VIX. We know that when US equity markets uh, enter a prolonged bull market rally, the level of the VIX tends to steadily decline. But in a very short period of time, strange things can happen. So, you know, I don't know if I would call that a top risk um, because it, would, it still wouldn't necessarily overshadow the premium income that CLIP is generating in that particular period of time. But it's certainly an anomalous thing that could happen that could cause, you know, some degree of underperformance that you wouldn't otherwise expect. Um, James, what do you think are, are some of the risks uh, that, a, that a CLIP investor or, or top risks that a CLIP investor should be, uh, should understand? Right, well, I think you, you hit the, you know, the, the two main ones, Jonathan, um, and, and certainly it is a bit of a double-edged sword as we see price declines, uh, which CLIP is exposed to, price declines uh, in K-Web shares, uh, we would expect to see uh, some decline in the value of clip shares as well, but that would be coupled with 
a spike in volatility, which would lead to you know higher implied volatility uh, in the clip options, or sorry, in the KWeb options, and uh, you know higher premiums for for clip investors over time. Um, you know, I, I think the other broad categories of risk that a lot of our investors uh, tend to ask about or think about uh, with with any of any of our funds or, or any ETFs broadly is is kind of from a structural and operational perspective. Um, you know, there, there's no meaningful risk here, uh, again, by virtue of the fact that the fund actually holds KWeb itself. There's no risk of the fund's exposure on the underlying deviating from the exposure uh, on the options that are written. And then, you know, other risks like rapid growth in the AUM of the fund. Um, you know, I often get the question um, managing uh, our strategies uh, around what would be the largest, um, you know, create or redeem uh, that you would expect to see in the fund or, or that would uh, potentially cause you concern. And I can say with a high level of confidence here um, that it would have to be, uh, you know, even very, very large flows. If we saw, again, a, a nine-figure uh, inflow, I would have no concerns about uh, putting that to work within this fund. Um, there's certainly ample liquidity in the underlying KWeb shares uh, and certainly ample liquidity in the options market to absorb flows of that size. Um, and then again, on the way out, uh, you know, we think about, and in something that's of supreme importance uh, to, to us and our investors is liquidity both ways. Uh, we certainly understand we have a lot of long-term holders in both KWeb and we expect that'll be a, a similar scenario here in Clip. Um, but, uh, you know, to the extent that um, people need to, um, people need to sell that the fund uh, does see redemptions, we take a lot of pride in uh, ensuring that uh, those redemptions, uh, you know, are able to be absorbed by the fund just as efficiently as as creations. Uh, and that two-way flow of liquidity is of supreme importance to us. Um, and then the final hidden risk is not so much a risk of the fund, but a risk as you invest, uh, as you receive these premium payments, um, you do end up with with cash, uh, and it's important to keep that on your radar to continue to reinvest in the strategy. If you think about, let's say, putting a million dollars into Clip and you think about the long-term um, income potential of that investment, um, it looks very different if you, uh, if you reinvest uh, that income in the fund and, and have the compounding benefits of that income over time versus uh, if you don't, if you let that cash simply sit on the sideline. So that's something that I think is, is maybe intuitive to some investors, but, but not to all. And it's something that's really important. Um, as we receive our, our CLIP uh, distributions, um, you know, as investors receive their CLIP distributions, um, you know, it's important to, to be mindful of reinvestment. And I know that some platforms uh, have the ability to check a box uh, to reinvest that income. Uh, into the same strategy, into the same ETF, as you're receiving that cash, um, buying more shares of Clip, and others don't. So you would need to actively go in and uh, either you know do that trading by the additional shares, or uh, instruct your um, your trader, your advisor, uh, whoever you deal with, uh, to access liquidity uh, to ensure that you're maintaining uh, that full exposure to the investment. Um, and and that's something that I think is worth mentioning. James, that's such a great point because. You know, I've had this happen to me personally, where you get year-end distributions from ETFs, and next thing you know, you've got all this cash sitting that is idle. So this is interesting, right? So you've got all this cash. It's important to redeploy that cash, just given the numbers uh, that are associated with these distributions. Great, great point. Um, you know, there, there's a before I uh, kind of go to the next question. There's um, uh, we want to make sure that if you're interested in receiving the presentation, we're getting a lot of requests for the presentation, um, please email us at info at craneshares.com. So info at craneshares.com if you're interested in having these materials available to you in a PDF format. Uh, James, there's a question here about tenor of the underlying mm -hmm. covered calls. Um, can you get into um, the maturities that we're targeting um, for writing covered calls? Because obviously you can write them uh, you know, front month contract, you can go out quite a bit in terms of duration. Um, so how far are we going out? And, you know, maybe get into, um, you know, what that looks like and what people can expect to see on that holdings file as we grow the strategy. Sure, sure. And um, yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I think it's, 
It's an interesting question. It's something we spend a lot of time uh, when we were constructing the fund and thinking about the strategy, looking at uh, historical data, uh, information uh, going back over the past several years on KWeb options and um, you know shorter uh, tenor, something uh, you know certainly within 90 days, uh, certainly within 60 days, um, tends to have uh, the the best outcomes in terms of performance uh, and, and the greatest benefit of premium versus time value that we're writing in those options. So as a covered call, a qualified covered call strategy, as, as Jonathan mentioned, um, we, we write options that are um, longer than 30 days in duration, uh, but we aim to keep that, um, that tenor within that 30 to 60 day window uh, to optimize uh, the outcomes for the fund's performance. And you'll see within the fund holdings, since we're a you know, fully transparent fund, uh, we're posting our holdings on a daily basis. Um, so you can go in and see exactly what the fund holds, both in terms of uh, number of shares of KWeb, cash, as well as the options positions. Um, you know, we're writing those options as we're either uh, rolling, uh, you know, the older uh, tranche of options is expiring, uh, we're rolling into newer, newer options, we're writing those out uh, more than 30 days. Uh, and then when we receive inflows, when we have creates come into the fund, we're obviously um, you know, taking in KWeb shares and writing uh, the covered calls against those shares. Uh, and we're writing those again, uh, more than 30 days out, uh, but less than 60. And we aim to write those at, um, at that day's closing nav. So you may see um, a 32 strike option in the holdings, and then you may see a, you know, a, something with a, a very specific price um, you know, you may see a, a 3171 strike option, um, and, and that's reflective of, um, you know, when the underlying shares came into the fund at that level, we aim to write the options uh, specifically at the money when we're receiving those shares, um, and that's what you'll see in the fund holdings. And over time, I would expect to see as we're, you know, seeing more flows into the fund, um, potentially more line items uh, in, in the options, uh, more call uh, contracts uh, in the holdings. Um, but you'll, again, as they're written, more than 30 days, and then you can see the time to expiration as we approach expiration. Yeah, spot on, James. And, ju and just to, to let our, our audience know, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about this because we asked ourselves, what do we want CLIP to be? And we decided we wanted it to be the purest representation of income that we can achieve given the volatility of KWeb. And to do that, the key is to write options that are at the money or near, nearly at the money and to write options of shorter tenors because that maximizes the, uh, you know, the monetization of volatility. So um, that's why we have this structure. And it's also very straightforward it's easy to explain, it's not a black box, and it's, it's fairly consistent with how people think about writing covered calls for, for their own portfolios. Um, I know that we, we've, we've run over time, but I wanted to uh, address one additional question that we have. And, and this is a, kind of our recommended ratio of KWeb and CLIP in a portfolio. And this is a really interesting question, and we're definitely going to do a lot more work on this as we go. You know, I talked about 50-50, but this is somebody that's saying, knowing what you know and understanding correlations, is there something that's optimal um, in allocating between KWeb and CLIP? And I think there's two ways to answer that. You know, one is the optimal mix of KWeb and CLIP is going to have a lot to do with the objective that you establish for your portfolio, right? We talked about putting something in an income portfolio versus a growth portfolio. But truth be told, it's going to have a lot to do with what else you own and how you own it and what you're trying to achieve. So um, it's not as simple as just saying, you know, 7228 or 6337. Um, we would have to make a lot of assumptions to give you a quote unquote optimal blend of KWeb and CLIP. But what we do believe is that there will be times, like the tool that CLIP has created is to give investors a choice. Historically, your choice has been, I'm gonna invest in KWeb 
And if the volatility becomes too much for me to stomach, I'm going to sell my K-Web. And we've seen that happen. We've seen investors buy K-Web and we've seen them sell it, particularly when volatility picks up and they realize it exceeds their risk tolerance or risk capacity. What Clip does is it gives an alternative in that scenario. So now you own K-Web. If volatility picks up and you're not certain, you don't have to sell K-Web. You can blend K-Web with Clip to produce income for a period of time. You can then sell Clip and re-expose yourself back to K-Web. So we view these two working hand in hand, but a lot of it has to do with what it is that you're trying to accomplish as an investor in your overall portfolio. We are gonna do more work on this and, and create profiles and, and under you know, certain conditions and scenarios and assumptions, provide more guidance on how you can use CLIP and KWeb in tandem given different market environments and objectives. Um, so look out for that. Um, on behalf of, of Crane Shares, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, I hope you found uh, our discussion uh, useful and that you're excited as we are about uh, the innovation and the uniqueness that CLIP brings to the marketplace. Um, and we hope to be speaking with you soon. Thank you. Thank you.